Pink or live now. All right. Audio down. Music down, I should say. Welcome, folks. We're live once again to work on the Neptune 4 Max once again. Uh, I'm going to change camera setting real quick. I just wanted to brighten that up a little bit. That's better. Welcome. Happy Saturday, everybody. Um, first and foremost, channel memberships are uh, now a thing. Uh, thank you so much. I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name here, but Zhao Shao? I don't really know how you I'm pronounce that. I'm sorry. Um, but thank you for becoming not only the first member, but a chief science officer. There are four levels of channel membership, so... Uh, lab intern, lab assistant, chief science officers, and then uh, supervillains for, I don't know if anybody really wants to be generous. <laughs> Jose, welcome. Oh, I had two instances of a stream going. Yeah. Ah, damn it. Uh, there we go. I want to get this pulled up on the TV in front of me here. Live chat. Yeah. Okay. How the Y-axis end up? We tested it yesterday. Um, it moves beautifully, smoothly. Um, Joe Show is close enough. Cool. So, Joe Show, thank you so much for becoming the first channel member on Mandic Labs. So, welcome to it. Welcome, everybody, to the stream. Um, and yes, as I said, channel memberships are now live. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Uh, let's pull up the input shaper graphs, I guess, real quick. Bit better time today for Europeans. Welcome, Maddie. The, the joy of the weekends, you know. Let me grab something quick here. Um, just for anybody who might have missed it at the end of stream yesterday, we did compare the input shaper graph of before and after the installation of our linear rails on the y-axis here it honestly didn't make a big improvement it did make an improvement not a big one so let me uh pull it up quick take a look and then we'll get to dive into the work here uh all right uh, before pulled up um, let me switch to the instructions page. I've got to adjust my window capture here. Uh, oh, that's not what I wanted, but whatever. I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. Photos. There we go. No, that's not working. <laughs> okay, let's go with screen share. Uh, which, this is all blown up for some reason. Transform. Fit to screen. Okay, that's better. Here's our before input shaper graph. Uh, loving the synthwave music. Rad. I'm going to update the playlist. Now that this channel's justifying itself a little bit better, um, how's the Mark IV firmware going? I'm running the first print on it right now, so I don't know yet. Um, but it's running a temp tower right now to start getting it uh, tuned in a little bit. Robot Overlord, welcome to the stream, and thank you for becoming a channel member. Very much appreciated. Um, here's our before input shaper graph. So this is the uh, V-slot roller wheels on the Y-axis, and this is a tiny image of the... Uh, no, wait, that's X. Damn it, where's my Y? Oh, there it is. I had to go back the other way. After, okay, so before, here... The biggest thing to note, I have the arrow pointing to it, the order of magnitude, the, the power level that the resonance was reaching uh, was greater before. So our new graph still doesn't look amazing. It's a big heavy bed, so I'm not shocked by that, but it did lower the overall intensity of the uh, resonance that it's compensating for, which allows us to pump up to 1800 acceleration on the y-axis, big heavy bed again, uh, and to MZV, uh, input shaper type, which is arguably better than the one it was recommending before. So, how do you get those graphs? By the way, I had to. You had it's built. It's an inbuilt script 
let me switch here. It's an inbuilt script in Clipper um, that I don't think Obsbot's turned on right now. It's an inbuilt script in Clipper that uh, creates those graphs effectively. It, it's on the measure resonance page for input shaper stuff uh, in Clipper. All right. Hobo Banana, welcome and thank you for becoming a channel member. It is greatly appreciated. Thank you so much, uh, Robot Overlord, Josh, uh, I'm sorry, how did you say? Josh Show. Josh Show, thank you. And Hobo Banana, thank you so much. Uh, no, now people can donate memberships. Yes, you should be able to donate memberships as well. My pleasure. I think longevity of life, uh, less maintenance, less troubleshooting will be better overall. I agree. I think that's really the bigger thing here. I, I mentioned it yesterday on stream, uh, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Thank you for saying that. I mentioned it yesterday. The V-slot roller wheels on this bed, I found that through adjusting them, you could warp the shape of the bed on this machine and totally throw off your leveling. So you had to like adjust the V-slot roller wheels and then you had to come back and adjust your uh, bed leveling again and it could really throw it off now we at least have a fixed non-adjusting platform to work off of so like that should be an improvement who knows we also put uh, silicone spacers in now uh, in place of the springs on this bed so good stream uh, good distraction before i take a baseball bat to this raspberry pi dark third dimension good luck with that with a bigger volume, really do want everything as dialed in as you can get it. Totally agree. On a big machine like this, a big print, especially as you start to get taller, if things are leaning, if your first layer's not good and you're 30 hours into a print and it peels off the bed, that's garbage. That's 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 a bad time. So I think I think the rails are gonna be positive for this, at least in that respect. Okay. Let's get to the x-axis rail we're gonna be putting on here. Um, the bed is still a little bowed comparing to the linear rail sitting on top of it. You're totally right. I haven't leveled it at all yet. Um, I haven't leveled it at all yet. So the middle of the bed is bolted down rigidly to the frame. And then the outside edges have spacers, uh, silicone spacers. So they need to be sucked down yet. So you're right. You are right. But just ordered SDI or a DSI TFT 50 to replace it. It was small to my, it was too small to my liking. Oh, um, you were going back to the conversation we were having yesterday about the SPI screen. Yeah. Okay. X-axis. Um, we're going to be replacing, of course, the V-slot roller wheels on here with another MGN9, MGN9H linear rail here. Um, and I don't know why, but Elegu sent me a whole new tool head for this thing. I don't know why. It just randomly showed up. They never told me it was coming. And one day I got a new tool head in the mail. So, yeah. Uh, I noticed they changed the mount to the bed. No more standoffs or silicone spacers. I noticed that too. Mine is the older version of the kit. The kit that you would buy today seems like it is better designed to fit these machines. Um, but, you know, hey, whatever. I'm working with what I got. Um... Maybe I'll look at like redesigning or making my own like printed parts or something to more rigidly mount this. I don't know. The standoffs seem fine in there. The silicone gaskets are the thing I didn't like the most about this, but whatever. So let's get the x-axis off of here, the uh, tool head off, and then we can swap to the new one and get the V-slot roller wheels off of here. I'm going to check the Obsbot camera real quick. I don't think I powered it on. Did I? There we go. Just bring in another angle here. Two tool heads, IDEX. Yeah, no, I don't want to live. Up, I don't want to give up that build volume. Swapping the Y motor. I don't think we're going to be. This is left over. This was still sitting here from yesterday's stream. Because it's a 0.9 degree motor, and on a big bed like this, I don't know that I want that. I don't think I have any other LDO 1.8 degree motors right now. Yeah, no. I 
think all the spare motors I have right now are all 0.9 degree. I don't have any 1.8s. Would there be a benefit to swapping motors? I have no idea. We were, we were talking about doing it just to see if it would make a, a difference, but no matter what, I'm not going to do it on this stream if we do it. So. Might be the longest time streaming without a Jean cameo. Yeah. She's, I don't know where she's at right now. She was eating lunch when I uh, came in the studio. How's the Neptune 4? It exists. It's here. Um, so far, so good. All right, I'm going to see about getting this tool head off of here. I'm going to pull up their instructions, even though they're not the most amazing. They can be a helpful guide. And we'll see what they say to do. Uh, instructions. Nope, that's the wrong window. I want... Oh, I, Jean heard her call. She heard her call. Bean, what's up, baby girl? Yeah? You don't say. All right, let's get to the... Yeah? You want to come up and see everybody? Yeah. Oh, hi. Yeah. What's up, baby girl? Okay, we got their video for instructions. It exists. Best response about most printers. Yeah. All right, we got to loosen up our belt tension. No surprise there. So we can get the belt off. Hen, remove the belt. Okay. Hen, remove the belt. Where are we going? Okay. All right, we gotta get the belt off, then we're gonna get the V-slot roller wheels off. Nothing shocking about any of that. Uh, do I have to loosen anything up to get the tensioner to loose? All right. Here, Cat Matias is sitting and watching Gene. Gene, you've got cat fans. <laughs> I ordered a, um, this morning I ordered, uh, after yesterday's conversation in stream, I ordered a bed heater. Uh, I ordered a Delta bed heater because I didn't have any spare Delta beds. So a round one so I can make uh, a clipper powered uh, cat bed for her. So whoever, I forget who gave me that idea. I'll have to look back at the chat from yesterday's stream, but that's happening. All right, now I gotta loosen these up. Hi, you come to help? Where you going? Where you going? Ah, gotta get to the wheels underneath. Curious to see what this if this is worth it. Um, the X axis or Y axis didn't seem massively worth it. I think was pretty much the the thought everybody had yesterday. I should have put this up more. I gotta get under it a little bit. I thought about in doing an enraged rabbit carrot feeder or running anything uh, for your Voron or anything running Clipper. Um, I've got a whole parts kit here for the original for V1. Um, what, what, if I get the Fabrico edge to edge heater rated a 600 watts for some reason, should I get the higher spec PSU? The edge to edge heater from Fabrico is probably AC mains voltage. Um, not knowing exactly what one you're talking about, it's probably AC mains voltage and you won't be running it off your power supply anyway. It runs off an SSR and directly off of your wall power. Um, I have a whole parts kit for an ERCF uh, here that I've never gotten around to putting together. And now they already have ERCF V2 and I, haven't, I still haven't gotten to the original kit I had. So, I don't know. I'd like to build one, but at this point, I don't know. At this point, I just don't know. Uh, buh, 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 buh. I think I gotta pull the tool head off first here so I can get to the, oh wait, no, I can get to those V-slot roller wheels up here. Uh, that camera got a good view. It's got a view of Gene's back. One second. Uh, 
You turning your back on the audience? You turning your back on the audience, kiddo? Hex wrench and an adjustable wrench. I gotta pull the V-slot roller wheels off of here so I can get this tool head off. We're gonna be reusing the mounting plate uh, here, the tool head mounting plate. Uh, is a cat cam gonna be a thing? A cat cam will be a thing, yes. We will be getting a cat cam for Jean. She needs to needs to be able to talk to you folks or have her own space. So yeah, cat cam's happening, totally. I found this on the web. Uh, Fabrico doesn't say if it's ANC mains voltage, huh? What uh, what beds are you looking at? I because like they have a whole bunch of beds. I don't know what what machine you're looking at a bed for. Bam! Tool head off. New streaming channel, Manda Cats. I think we should probably stick with like... Okay, uh, Fabrico's 300 millimeter edge to edge is definitely mains voltage. That's what I have on my 2.4. So it's definitely mains voltage. Can you put a camera on a cat? We probably could. Uh, you know what? You just reminded me. I haven't checked if the Osmo is working. Doesn't look like it is. Hold on one second. I'm updating the camera. Not working. Don't know why. It's there. Let's try that again. No. <laughs> I swear I'm here. There we go. I wanted the uh, the Osmo angle just in case for like closer, closer stuff here. So, not the greatest image quality compared to the rest of the cameras, but hey, we've got another angle. Jean. Oh, now you turn your back that. She turns her back on this camera too. It's like she's nose. How stupid it would be would it be to put a stealth burner on a Neptune 4 Max? Kind of dumb. It really wouldn't serve much purpose. Um I don't think the Neptune 4 Max has a pretty solid extruder. Like the overall overall the tool head on this is is pretty good. Um, I've got X, Y, and Z rails coming from my Neptune 4 Plus should be here today. Cool. Um, aside from the V-slot roller wheels, the tool head has a pretty decent flow on the hot end. Let's, uh, see if we can see that on the camera. So it uses a kind of a bamboo style heater element and longer melt zone. The nozzles that it uses are like volcano length. Um... And it runs dual 50, or 40 15 part cooling fans for a pretty decent amount of cooling. So, honestly, in a lot of ways, a stealth burner would be a downgrade. And proprietary. It is a proprietary nozzle that is really annoying. It is a proprietary nozzle that is annoying. No high, fro, uh, no high flow and only brass, yeah. Yeah, there is, um, there is a way to get Revo working on this. Yes, I have seen that. There's a way to get Revo nozzles working on this tool head. And there's a way to get the um, bamboo hot ends working on here as well. Neither of which I really looked at much. Okay, I don't want to lose these screws. Cool, I've got the carriage plate off. Uh, I gotta get the V-slot roller wheels off of the carriage plate as we won't be using them. Yeah, um, do any, uh, on AliExpress, are there any uh, other people, any other companies producing? Um, Hardened nozzles? I think there are. Yes, Elegoo doesn't have them, unfortunately. But pretty sure there's some... Uh, I'm going to try to get open, uh, open Neptune in on here, Eddie. Yeah. I do want to try and get Open Neptune done yet today. But 
let's see how the uh, the X rail goes first. I don't want to overpromise because the Y rails took a lot longer than I expected. So. Not enough t room on this table for you, kid. I gotta add like a an, an extension off the side. Um, Maddie, what are you uh, what are you referring to? Sorry, I, I missed that car conversation. There's a bunch of people who've talked about Open Neptune. What is it? Uh, what is it? It it's running full mainline Clipper, and not having to go to El Elegoo for updates. Though I don't think it's been updated, like the install setup, particularly well. Um, um, so p say I put the 600 watt heater in and the 200 watt of the main PSU and 25 of the RPI, the thing, uh, the thing then draws a max of 825. Most power supplies can overrun their rating a little bit so they can draw a little more than they can output. So there's a solid potential you could get up to a thousand watts if everything is fully loaded. It's unlikely everything will be fully loaded at pretty much any point. Um, not that hard, because it's not likely your bed's gonna be at 100% heating, your hot end's gonna be 100%. Uh, just have limited power in my basement, totally understandable. Um, and also you can actually, in Clipper, limit the maximum power of the bed too, just so it won't um, it won't overrun. Uh, you can do that. Like mine, mine, I think I had limited to 80% power. It can only pull 80%. So it can only do what? 500 Watts, 450. No, not 450, 450. So like 475, something like that. I'm doing math bad today. My bath, my math's not doing so well today. Ah, I'm gonna clean this off. This plate's greasy from the wheels. Cool. There's what we need: the original carriage plate with the wheels taken off of it. Our new mount, I'm pretty sure, is going to mount to these two screws. Uh, where is it here? Yeah, here it is. Our new mount mounts. Uh, I have it upside down. It mounts to these two screws, the top two. Yeah, it mounts to those. So that's our linear rail mount. It'll mount to that, and then we'll have a solid connection between the linear rail mounting and the carriage plate. Okay, back to the instructions. See what they want us to do. Because this, this mounting plate thing for this, I believe, mounts back here. Sorry, Gene. I, I, fr I gave you a fright. Gave you a fright. Video is constantly halting. I've got excellent condition on my end from uh, YouTube. Maybe try reloading the stream or try in a different browser, I would say. Okay, Gene, you keep everybody entertained while I, uh, stream's not okay on your end. Awesome. <laughs> Firefox is glitchy. All right, good to know. All right, instructions. Let's go back to this and take a, another look at this. What it, we got the wheels off. I got the carriage plate off. Uh, okay, these back two screws come out of the, the extrusion. That's what I thought. Back two screws come out, and then that plate just mounts on top of them. Awesome. That's really straightforward. You're very helpful right now, Gene. So helpful. Lovely green eyes. Yes, she does. She is our little space alien. She is our little space alien. We got the main character. Yes, we do. 1080 buffering for me as well. Huh. I have gigabit internet. I'm hoping the next place, I'm hoping the next studio, maybe I can upgrade to like two gig. Not that I should really need it for YouTube streaming. I'm only streaming 1080, but we'll see. I'd like to get 
to 4K streams. I'd like to get 4K streams going, but uh, I don't know what I need to. It's kind of overkill. But I also like overkill. Gene just enjoying the view. Yeah, just staring down the barrel. I would I would leave that angle on except for uh, I would leave that angle on except uh, you can't see me doing anything. Come on. I gotta like fully unthread this screw. Okay. One screw out. Oh, Obsbot's up and running. Let's see if the Obsbot angle is any better. Obsbot camera. Hi. You're way up there. Yeah, there we go. Now you can still see Gene and you can see me working. Perfect. That's the best of both worlds. Ish. Till we get a till we get a gene cam, you know. At least ten people have subbed since the stream started. You were at one point six six, now at one point six seven. Awesome. 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 Don't forget to drop a like on the stream. Help other people find it, I guess. I'm bad at mentioning to do those self-promotion-y things. All right, so this plate. Um, uh, so this plate mounts in place right there on top of the extrusion. So a little weird, but it works. Screws got to go back through this mount. This isn't like the most sturdy of mounts for. Oh, I just realized something. Because this is a uh, because this mount is for a Neptune Three Max, it's covering up the holes for the auxiliary part cooling. Here's a question: Should I don't normally do something like this on stream? Should I drill holes so that that can still be mounted? because there are no holes in this. And I'm sure this is something to do with the fact this kit is for, go, you can do it. Oh, there you go, all the way to the couch, kiddo. Um, that was a good jump for her. She's usually not that graceful. Okay, yes, yes. Nah, not now, it's, it's too loud. That's my worry. What won't you be able to mount if you do it? Uh, I won't be able to mount the auxiliary part cooling fan, which honestly, I don't care about it. But I do plan on giving this away. That's the thing. I do plan on giving this machine to somebody uh, when we move or, you know, at some point here. So only if you want to push speed. Yeah. Uh, let me look at their instructions again for the 4MAX. I bet it has the holes. I just want to confirm. Four max upgrade kit, X axis. It has the holes. Yes, it does. No surprise there. Okay, I'm gonna see about uh, reducing the sound level. When I start drilling, I'll turn down the microphone volume and turn up the music for a little, for just a short time while we drill. I'm gonna drill it. I don't want to, but um, I also, I want whoever ends up with this to get what they, to get a full Neptune four max, you know? I don't, I don't use the auxiliary fan either, personally, but, all right, I'm gonna grab a clamp real quick so I can locate this, and then a square so I can, I can mark these holes accurately where they're supposed to be. Right back. Got a square and I got a couple of clamps. Yeah. Yeah, since somebody else is gonna end up with this thing, I don't want them to not have. That is an LTX, uh, that is an LTX CPU pale, uh, pillow on the couch with Gene. 
She is hanging out with the LTX pillow. One of them. There's two of them over there, actually. There's the AMD and the uh, and the uh, AM, uh, AMD and the Intel one are both over there. Thank you, LTT, for sending those over for my couch. Not sponsored. Not sponsored. Okay. Now I got this clamp. I got this clamped on. I'm gonna transfer the hole position of each of these. Luckily, this is aluminum. It'll drill easy. Hole position of each of these to this bracket. I'm gonna drill these holes a little big, so it'll be good. What am I missing? What am I missing in chat? I don't see messages from, let me highlight. Strange is that. Oh, uh, what were you talking about, Maddie? I'm sorry. Uh, were you talking about the thing you emailed me about? Vishal, welcome. Okay, we've got all those transferred now. All those are transferred. And now I've got a, a long straight edge here. Oh, okay. Is there something you want me to share about it? I'm sorry I missed the conversation y'all were having. All right, so I've got, probably won't be able to see this on camera very well. Pull up OBS, Bloop. I didn't switch to the right cam, there we go. This camera, too many cameras. Uh, but you can kind of sort of see, I've got those marked out now where their positions. Uh, I can give a direction to see the render, okay. If you want to email me a link or something, I'll drop it in the chat. I can see about doing that. Okay, I got those transferred. Now I need a center punch and I need to drill. Add a center punch in a toolbox. I'm gonna turn down the microphone real quick just so it doesn't make a ton of noise and up the music for just a second. type of tea do I have? The tea is, uh, it's a mixture. It's sleepy time tea from that cult, uh, Celestials sleepy time tea and, um, a bag of, uh, constant comfort or constant comment. Sorry. From Bigelow constant comment. The uh, like orangish, they're both decaf teas. It's just good for my throat while I'm streaming my voice and all that. All right. Uh, I need to grab a block of wood so I can drill and not drill into my workbench. And then we will drill some holes quick. This should go really quickly. Should. Right back. Piece of plywood. That'll do. Change camera.
Here's the other camera angle quick. And now I can clamp this down and drill. And grab drill bits quick. Drill bits. Drill. Morning all and happy early Easter. Monjan, welcome to the stream and happy Easter to you. Though for me, us, me, it's, uh, it's not for sure, but hey, welcome to it. Uh, do you think your table might be uh, going in or factoring into input shaper graphs? Yeah, it's not the most stable table. I don't think so. I mean, realistically, if we want to see if it makes a difference after we get this together, and make some progress. Maybe I'll put it down on the concrete floor we can try again and see what happens. I don't think that's really causing a problem, but maybe. All right, time to turn up music and get some drilling done. Uh, hopefully this will go really quick, it should. So, as long as my battery doesn't die on the drill, which looks like it might. Why, hello, I'm low-key confused as why you're dr drilling holes. Um, this was, uh, the linear rail kit I'm installing was for a, uh, he could, I can send a link now. Okay, cool, I'll check my email. Um, error. The linear rail kit that I was provided was for a Neptune 3 Max. This is a Neptune 4 Max. Music's a little loud, I think. Um, and so I had to drill a handful of holes for the auxiliary part, auxiliary part cooling fan mounting because the Neptune 3 Max didn't have that, the 4 Max does. That's not a problem with the kit. The 4 Max kit has the holes in it. That's a problem with the fact that I'm using a 3 Max kit on a 4 Max. So, uh, I don't see an email. Did you email me, Maddie? Or, uh, I'm sorry, uh. Yeah, did you email me? That you sent me a couple things. I don't want to I don't want to share what you don't want me to share. 
Send it a second ago. Okay, it might. It just didn't. Oh, there it is. There it is. Oh, it's okay. It's public on your Patreon. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Uh, drop it in chat now. Dropping it in chat. Okay, now we can put this on. Just want to make sure these holes are lining up okay. It's almost like I've done this before. Almost like I've drilled a hole or two in my time. Uh, what are your thoughts on Trudon or Rat Rig? Trudons just seem to be budget knockoff Voron projects, as far as I can tell. I haven't looked into them too deep, honestly. I know I've heard one or two people not be particularly impressed by them. Um, honestly, those holes could be drilled a little bigger, I feel like. Yeah. Um... And then Rat Rig, I'm really interested in the Rat Rig V Core 4. Now that they've announced it, I can say something. I'm really interested in the V Core 4. And I'm hoping, hoping, hoping we're gonna be building one on stream. I can't confirm nor deny that yet. But I'm hoping. Yeah. They're like half a hole off. Uh, I'm curious why you use three drill bits instead of a step drill. One, I despise step drills. Just don't like them. Uh, two, step drills are only good for a certain thickness of material. This is like eighth inch thick aluminum. And a step drill that I have... Well, oh, okay, there's numerous reasons why. One, step drills only have so many sizes on them. And I like to be precise about the holes that I'm drilling. Though I need to drill bigger holes now. Um... Step drills only have so high of a step, so that only creates so much uh, material thickness you can drill through. I find them to create, to not always drill as accurately or well, in my opinion. Um, for me, changing out between a couple of specific drill bits and just doing it, there's nothing wrong. It, it, it's easy for me. I, like, I, I'm so used to doing it that like I just blow through, do it, do it, do it. Uh, if you press too hard and you overshoot, you either screwed your uh, screwed or you need bigger washers. True. I don't know. I just I've just never been a fan of step bill bits. I have drill bits for the drill bits for the drill bits, and I just use them. I'm gonna drill these out real quick. They're like half a hole off. I, they're four millimeter screws, and I drilled the 4.5 millimeter, so I'm gonna bump it up to 5.5, and then that should uh, get us good. Christopher Sexton, welcome to the stream. All right, I'm going to step up a drill bit size quick. We should be good. Um, industry question. Do you think Prusa will pull a lulzbot and fade out, uh, build a core XZ, or core XY hype and Y? Uh pure speculation they already have core xy with the uh prusa xl i am certain we will see my guess i don't know this for fact i have no inside information here i think we're gonna see they have a small core xy machine they just haven't released it to the public in their print farm that print farm they have where all the machines like bolt together into one big wall of printers those are smaller versions of the prusa xl i think they're going to work on creating a better um, a, a, a public version of that. I think that's going to happen. Um, I think they'll make a public version of that and that'll, that'll come. It'll probably be its own thing, not a Mark 4.5 or anything like that. I don't think they're going to fade out at all. Joe, hello from a fellow Philly person. Hello, I'm only in Philly for a few more months now, but thank you. Welcome. Um, they still have a massive commercial market like um yeah now that they got the mark four out the door they'll have more resources to experiment that totally makes sense um what's the other thing commercial market i think is where you're going to see prusa go more i think prusa is going to push more toward industrial and commercial customers and a little bit less 
on the hobbyist side. I think that's what's going to happen because honestly, that's what every company eventually seems to do because it's when you're making machines for hobbyists, I, I talked to Bree Pettis once. I had a, I had a whole interview with Bree Pettis once who, if anybody's not familiar, he was the founder of uh, original MakerBot. So Reanimaker, the wooden MakerBot that I have, he was the guy who founded that company and made that machine, uh, part of that company. Um, he called it the race to the bottom. He said 3D printers hit this point where it was just the race to the bottom. How cheap and undercut and small profit margin can you get? And nobody's going to beat the Chinese companies and their access to supply chains. That's a thing that people don't think about. It's it's not about cheap labor because plenty of Chinese companies pay their employees decent for their country. It's that if I need a new semiconductor for my pro my main board, I can walk down the street and go to a factory that makes semiconductors like that accessibility to manufacturing and parts is unmatched. A U.S. company has to buy a, tr a shipload of chips and they're still going to pay more for them than the person who can walk into the factory. It's right across the block. So. Uh, yeah, okay, I'm gonna drill these holes real quick a little bit bigger and then we go unlimited access to supplies. Yeah Uh, Vishal has a great question. Why can't the Chinese companies subsequently conquer the commercial space? Nobody to say they can't. Like, that's a thing that could occur. The biggest reason, uh, the biggest thing you got to think about with commercial space is support. Support will be king when it comes to, um, to commercial space. If you're making your living with a machine, you need to be able to rely on the company providing the machine to help you out and work with you. And I'm sorry, the Chinese companies aren't good at that. Even Bamboo, the biggest of the Chinese companies right now, is not great at support. You need They're going to need to have, if not American support people, they're going to need to have, um, uh, twenty like Prusa has 24-7 support in the Czech Republic to help support people around the world. That's hard to match. Um supply chain of parts for replacement and repair or repair services. Like now Prusa has printed solid in the U S who, if you're a U.S. company working with them, you can send it over there. You can send it to them. Um, and there's also, uh, there's one more factor that not a lot of people think about. And that is, um, government contracts, government contracts. If you're working on government jobs, you better not be using a bamboo machine. Uh, if you're printing stuff for like an aerospace engineering company that contracts with the US government, there needs to be security measures in place for the IP rights of what you're working with, for the security of the equipment you're using. And that's stuff that's not in place on most machines. Now, air gapped machines like a Prusa Mark III not online changes things. But like, there's that stuff. If we're talking cloud service or or uh, sending things over from a slicer to your machine, there's things there that aren't like we don't talk about it enough. Honestly, every Clipper powered 3D printer is a Linux machine. How many Linux hackers could probably hack into one of our Clipper machines if they could get access to it like that? Security is not a big thing on Clipper because it's intended to be run on a local network, not open to the outside world, and they don't recommend you open it to the outside world because of that. Actually, the Dremel machine, if you ever saw the short that I did on um, on Dremel, um, their machine that they are still working on to my knowledge, uh, 
they one of the things they're working on is security because they are looking to sell to government contractors, government offices, the army, things like that. So their machine is very expensive. Uh, I got a, a Cobra 2 Max that was easily hacked. Okay. Um, the um, that, that Dremel machine, they're working on security measures. They're improving security in Clipper so that they can sell those machines to government bodies to government contractors so that they have support and security measures that they require and that's something that like a lot of these companies don't think about ever or at the very least don't care about uh, imagine if you see a clone of your project for half the price a couple weeks later your profit's gone that's that's the problem that's the nature of open source unfortunately uh, but it's also why I, I understand Uh, security doesn't matter so much on home-built machines, but for factory really needs to be locked down hard. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's, again, this is something I've hacked my own Bamu machine and pushed non-authorized print. However, it did take three days of coding, but it's possible. And if you were try if you were determined and you knew that some government contractor had bamboo machines, you could probably find a way, you know? Um not talking down on them it's not the market that they're after but that's stuff that raises price and where it's harder for foreign companies to to deal with because like let's face it at the end of the day the fact that bamboo is a chinese company immediately disqualifies them that's it uh like the u.s government is not buying bamboo machines they're just not going to um like you can't even sell servers with certain chips made in China in the US. So Yeah. Have rather have a cheaper machine and deal with the repairs, maintenance, security myself, but I can definitely see why people newer to the hobby would like the support. And uh, you know what? As somebody who's running a business, myself, I kind of get it. I get it too. And I, I kind of almost want it sometimes. If I was running a farm every day, all day, it would be immensely helpful for me to be able to pawn that shit off on somebody else. Um, even if I'm fully capable of doing it, if I've got a dozen machines that I need to keep running all day, every day to make a profit, taking time to repair one of them could be not worth it um and that's just the reality sometimes there are plenty of machine shops and and manufacturing uh plants out there you walk through and you'll see decommissioned machines that are um not in service because they can't justify the time to repair or the parts or whatever Uh, I have some printers at work, Hobo Banana says. I have some printers at work, and I can't connect them to any of the network because of healthcare. Can't be mad because it uh, makes I don't make the security policies. I mean, that's reasonable. I mean, like it is what it is. Um, I'm still not in love with that, but these holes almost need to be slots. Ugh, they still didn't line up nice. It feels like they got worse after I drilled them bigger. Um... So, I don't know. Shouldn't have drilled these. Taking way too much time on this. Nothing can be simple, can it? Something's got to be difficult in this. Ugh. I should really put some anti-backlash nuts on here, but that would be a, a whole project. And I might lose a little build volume doing it. Come on. All right. If it was smooth, if it was a smooth process, it'd be new learning. Yeah. All right. Loud noise for a second. I'm gonna drill a hole next to the hole. Just not happy with where they're lining up.
Sometimes you drill a hole and they just don't seem to get quite as close as you want them to. Uh, I have an X1C at work and just use SD card for G-code. Makes sense. And that's a, a legit path. And, and for a lot of companies, that's perfectly fine and reasonable. I, I was more talking like the serious contractor, like big stuff. Uh, but just, just the point of things like that. Things that some companies just don't want to deal with. Uh, do I have to get both a 220 and 110 mains fuse for your um, your 2.4 build? Are you in the U.S.? I honestly don't know. I honestly don't know. <laughs> um, if you're in the U.S., you just need a 110. I think a lot of fuses are going to be not a pretty agnostic to what voltage is running through them. Okay. A uh, great way to get machining equipment is to check what, what companies are getting rid of. You get 95% working machines. A fix easy for a hobbyist, but manpower costs make it not worth fixing. Totally. You'll see that a lot. Auctioning off old equipment that is easy enough to fix. Um, it's easy enough to fix, so like, what are you going to do? I thought 3D Musketeer said the X1C still seeks for Wi-Fi source even without a password. I I know nothing about that stuff. I have gotten... I've not... I purposely stayed out of all those conversations. I don't know. You'll have to check Grant's content for that. All right. I got to drill these again. I got to make these slots so they line up better. So, clamp and drill again. Yay. Fun. All right. Let's try this again. Oh, I forgot to turn down the music or turn up the music. Sorry. Forgot to turn the music up and my stuff down. I can't get behind a company that puts open source software and closes it down for their own profit. Um, there is still zero proof that Bam... Sorry. There's basically zero proof that Bamboo has done that, if that's who you're referring to. And it is liable at this point to be saying any different, unless without providing proof. I, like, I'm sorry, just like, just to be legitimately provide what I think is important legal feedback that folks claim, continuing to claim that Bamboo is using like Clipper or other open source stuff without properly crediting, if you have no proof to back it up, it's libel or defamation, you know, one of those legal things at this point because you're hurting a company without uh, help. Any cubic, K, uh, it's not actually that loud drilling sound. Okay, sorry, misinterpreting. I'm just used to everybody. I get emails like once a week of people trying to accuse bamboo of that stuff, and I'm so sick of it. Um, yeah, any cubic, they're not, they're using Clipper and they're not actually like putting it out there, right? I gave up on any cubic for the most part. Um, after they burned me on the, the Cobra Max and not providing firmware source and just telling me it's, it's fine, it's coming, it's coming, it drove me up a wall with that shit. All right, now let's get back to music up and I'll drill quick.
what I get for trying to do things quickly. Not being quite as aligned as I'd like. Not being quite as aligned as I need an end mill. I need a um, Milo. I need a Milo. <laughs> that would be way too complicated for this project, but okay, that's better. Now the holes line up nice. Making a DIY montage. The rare music is Mandic. Is Alan actually working? Uh, making a live B-roll montage. Yep, you're right. <laughs> Hopefully in the next studio space, I'll try and plan out like a more mobile live stream setup so we can like, you know, go over to the drill press for that kind of stuff and still get like angles on things. I will, uh, I will try and figure that into the next studio setup. Pretty good. Next studio, are you moving? Yes, Lander, we are moving. Unfortunately, not, well, whatever. We will be moving. Uh, will you do a studio tour before you tear the whole thing down? That's a great idea, yes. I do have a uh, minor milling experience. From my time as a metal fabricator, I ran bridge ports from time to time. Um, I would not call it like machinist experience by any means. Enough to be dangerous. So like this operation, I could have easily slotted holes like this or whatever, but yeah, I know why now, just after all you did this hard work. Um, why are we moving? Um, we are moving to be closer to my father-in-law. Um, my father-in-law is older and my wife wants to spend more time with him while she still can. Enough to be dangerous, so a trained professional. Uh, a half-trained professional. <laughs> no experience is enough to be dangerous. That, that's fair. That is fair. All right. Now we got this assembled. I actually don't know if I was supposed to use new hardware for this. I should probably look. Probably wants me to reuse the original, but I don't know for sure. Remove the two screws, then install the X-beam thing. Doesn't say. Okay, whatever. Seems like the original screws reach just fine. That's understandable, but it's sad because all the hard work. It is. I'm, I'm not thrilled about it, but... I'm not thrilled about it, but you know what? Like, We'll build a, an awesome studio in the next space, you know? We'll build an even better one. So, hopefully. Hopefully it'll be an even better one, I hope. That's the goal. So, all right. That's on. Now it's time for the rail, which means I got to grease the rail. I haven't greased it yet. Will you get more space? Hopefully. Ruby, uh, will you buy it now or still renting? We're going to rent at first. So, there's going to be a couple studios in the, in the future, I'm sure. Um... We're looking at possibly buying a property, but not 100%. For right now, we're just figuring on renting and moving. Uh, just to be like, get there and get ourselves started and work from there. We don't want to like rush and buy something just to get there. Um, you know, it's got to be right. And I'm definitely not making the big YouTube bucks yet, so... Um, but hopefully I'll get more space. Ruby keeps promising she's gonna, we're gonna try and find a space. She's the one mainly looking. Um, I've given her parameters of what I need and like what I have now. And you know, basically what I have now is what I've said, like I won't, I, I can't settle for anything less. Like the space I have now is already a little tight. So I need at least this and hopefully more. We shall see. The nice part is knowing you're moving, you can kind of pre-plan. Yeah, and I'm sure we'll probably do some of that. Like maybe build out the space in Fusion and we can 
uh, play around with like moving around toolboxes and maybe we'll do like a design stream where you folks can give input on what I should, uh, how I should lay out the new shop once we get there or something. I don't know. We'll figure it out. It'll be good. We'll make it into a good thing. I'll take the lessons I learned from this space and uh, make a better one. Take lessons learned and only improve. All right, grease this rail. Hire me for space layouts. Yeah. Gonna need an assistant. Um, Clipper Catbed gets a priority in, in potential uh, stream. I gotta get rolling on that project. I'm probably gonna do that before we move. So. That one I've just gotta sit down and design. Once the bed comes in and I can measure it properly, because there weren't dimensions online for the bed that I ordered. Oh. Come on, Grease. There we go. All right. Greasy, greasy. Might have suggest a stripper pull for the new maker space, just because. I mean, we are moving to Portland. There are a lot of strippers in Portland. Um, Clipper cat bed. <laughs> Law, what's that? It was somebody suggested yesterday that I should make Gene a Clipper powered cat bed. And they, I'm pretty sure they were joking, but I'm pretty sure that's a great idea. As she's currently snoozing on the couch. Uh, wrong camera. I can turn this one around though. Moving. There she is. Snoozing away on the couch. There's the jean cam. Bump up the ISO. Ah, too bright. Dang it. This is hard to do with my hands right now. There we go. There's the jean cam as she snoozes. For the moment. Uh, that is a CPU cushion. Those are those are a pair of um, LTT CPU pu uh, pillows. LTT CPU pillows. I haven't mentioned that yet. Ruby stole my LTT backpack. <laughs> I, I gave it to her for her. Uh, she went to visit her dad for for a little bit. Uh, for like a week or two. That's when I was streaming a lot. Started streaming a lot. And... Um, she took my LTT backpack. I gave it to her to go on the trip. I haven't gotten it back. She's using it to go to work every day now. <clears throat> She's like, you can have it if you need it. I'm like, it's my backpack. Don't expect it back now. I don't. I don't expect it back. That's okay. It's okay. It is really that good. Honestly, I was like, oh yeah, you should take this. It's a great backpack. Honestly, it's absolutely the best backpack I've ever had that isn't a camera bag. And then camera bags are only good for being camera bags. So like, it's the best backpack I've ever had. By a country mile. They are a pretty penny. They are a pretty penny. Thank you to LTT for providing the backpack I have. <laughs> LTTstore.com. Wow, that's a big printer. Yes, Pedro, it is. Haven't mentioned it in a while. By the way, uh, for we seem like seems like a bunch of people kind of joined in a little bit later here. Channel memberships are now a thing. They are now online. Channel memberships are now a thing. We've had a handful of folks join just this stream. Thank you very much to them for the support. All right, time to put this rail on. Insert segue to sponsor here. <laughs> thank you. <for> the <laughs> Nathan, thank you to LTT for providing the backpack I did have. Good call. <laughs> you are correct. Thank you. Thank you, LTT, for providing Ruby a backpack. Thank you, LTT. 
LTTstore.com. Get your goth girlfriend a backpack today. Uh, I use the electric screwdriver to run these in, I think. All right, now a bunch of M3 by six screws, a little bit of blue Loctite here. Get the obsbot angle going. Um, seems expensive for a screwdriver, been tempted by the screwdriver. I personally love it. I have two of them. I have the original one and then this custom one I got at LTX. Um, I really like it. If that's not an ad campaign, I don't know what is. I, honestly, LTT is probably missing on that. I'm going to have to message my contact over there. Um, so, I don't know. I really like them. I, I just, I would genuinely, I used to sell tools for a living. I worked on cars. This is my favorite ratcheting screwdriver. Absolutely, hands down. It is not cheap, and I understand that. And if you're making a living off of it, uh... If you're making a living with your tools, it makes sense. If you're not, I can understand not spending the money. I get it. Um, assuming linear rails is more reliable in your opinion? Yes, I do feel that they are more reliable overall. If nothing else, less maintenance. You'd still need to do maintenance. Um, it's, you still need to do maintenance. You need to eventually disassemble, clean, and re-lubricate, but a lot less often than you're going to have to adjust V-slot roller wheels. Do you have problems with moisture storing your filament like that, or do you just dry often? I don't dry often. I don't have a problem with filament uh, getting moist. I generally don't. I think there's a couple things working for me here. There's a few things working for me. I print a lot. Um, like, you may see the same spools up there all the time. To you folks, it probably never changes. To me, it's a new spool fairly often. So I will swap out tools. I'll swap out a spool and I'll put a fresh one in its place uh, once I get it like down about halfway or something. So there's that. Uh, so a lot of them don't sit around that much. Philly, Philly's pretty humid. It can be in the summer. Honestly, it's not that bad most of the time. And that's, prob that's definitely a factor. It's not that humid here. And also the studio is air conditioned and heated. So that helps. Um, I have a couple of spools of ASA that have been kicking around for a little too long now that are starting to get really stringy and a little bit boogery and need to be dried. Um, so it still happens to me, not as much as people think it does. I actually have a, a new dryer on the way I'm going to be testing out. So ASA has been kicking my butt in my X1C and enclosed I3. Any secret tips? Warps? Enough to pull the flex bed. How hot are you running the bed temp? How hot are you running your bed temp? And, um... Are you baking a chamber at all? Like, personally, I always warm a chamber up for quite a while before I send a print to go. Um, just to get it warmed up and ready. Uh, you're getting a sunlue dryer. No. No, I don't... I, it looks nice. It looks nice. I have no need for a four-spool dryer. It doesn't really make sense for me. 105 and heat soak for uh, 60 minutes. Wow. I'm sorry. I don't have much input for you then. I print a lot of ASA in my Bamboo X1, and that's pretty much what I do. Uh, I don't... Uh, I'm sorry. I don't have much better input. Just reminded me to check the temp tower, <coughs> temp tower off of the Mark IV. Okay, exactly where I was. I'm just fresh tuning in some ASA filament on the uh, Mark IV, just ensuring that the new firmware is the same. Could it be the quality of the ASA? There's a fair point. What's the boron printing? The boron is printing a Nevermore housing for the um, 
the uh, the Voron is printing a Nevermore housing for the V0, the Cookie Cat V0. Yeah. Yeah. It's printing a Nevermore. It's going in that. That's what it's printing right now. Looks like a microwave from over here. Yeah. It's got a very industrial look to it. That's for darn sure. Polylite, Bamboo, and Matter Hackers ASA have tried. All right. I print almost exclusively Polylite, so wow. Is it maybe the geometry of the parts you're printing? I don't know. Man, these... There's a lot of wiggle in this. How the heck are you supposed to square this rail up? I feel like we're going to be doing some skew correction on this. We're going to have to do a cauliflower from, or a cauliflower from, uh, from Vector 3D on this one. I've actually never done that. I've never, I've never done skew correction on a, on a clipper machine yet. I've just gotten lucky. Quite certain I've just gotten lucky. And then I'm probably not paying close enough attention. Uh, use a set of calipers. Honestly, I'm going to like just pull it back against uh, as tight to the rail as I can. Tighten these and then I'll check it with the caliper. I added rails to an old Ender 3 and never even looked back. Haven't had issues. Yeah, fair. Print two spacers. I'd have to be able to have the design of this and it would require too much time. Um... It would take too much time to design something just for that purpose, honestly. Will you get a dragon burner on the V0? I'll probably get one on mine. No. I don't like the way the, v the dragon burner looks. Just pure honestly. I don't like the way it looks. Um, I have no interest in it for that reason exclusively. I'm shallow. Um been setting up the Revo CR on my Ender 3. Any tips for setting up profiles on different nozzle sizes? Got the fully loaded kit. Um, just tune each one as if it's a completely different thing. Um, honestly, because temperature, retractions, uh, pressure advance values, linear advance values, whichever if you're using Marlin Clipper, uh, they'll behave differently with nozzle, different nozzle sizes. Tune each filament to each nozzle size. It's annoying, but it's the way you get the best results. Especially linear advance. Linear advance values can dramatically vary between uh, nozzle sizes, so. Flow and temperature, less so. Dang it. What about dragon burner with cat ears? Now you're speaking my language, but I don't think so. No, nah. I'm just going to stick with, I'm going to probably go to a, uh, I'm going to stick with mini stealth burner to start with. And then I will probably switch, switch the op spot angle. I wanted to do that a while ago. Ah, for some reason we zoomed in real bad. Um, is that core XZ? No, nope. It's regular Cartesian. Regular Cartesian with single belt on each axis. What's the purpose of linear advance? Is it like input uh, related to input shaping? No, not in the least. Linear advance is extrusion control. Linear advance slows the rate of extrusion toward the end of a line. So as you're laying down a layer and your bead comes to the end of the line where it would move to the next wall or to the next layer height, it will taper off the extrusion pressure at the end there. I'm talking to a camera that's not on right now. Um, it'll taper off the pressure as it comes to the end of that line so you don't end up with a blob at the end of it. Um, because as you're slowing down toward the end of that line or coming up on a corner, you slow down a little bit. If you're maintaining the exact same pressure output the entire time, it'll over extrude in corners or at the end of a line. 
First Voron kit can arrive from Fizak. I'm um, very excited. Awesome. Good luck with it, AJ. What kind of PTZ are you using? That is a Obsbot uh, Tail Air. It is the Obsbot Tail Air. Uh, I My last... Not my last YouTube video on Mandic Really. My second to last YouTube video on Mandic Really, I did a sponsor spot on this camera, and I've been loving having it for these streams. So... Thanks for explaining. You are welcome. All right, let's uh, whoop. let's check the position of this quick before we final tighten it. Where's the X stepper? It's right there. It's hiding in the shadow of the camera. Can't quite see it on camera, but it's it's there. Hit. Right there. Um, calipers. I get in front of the camera quick. To measure. Four point nine. They're even. Right at like five point oh three on each end, so reasonable. Within reason. Check it out after stream. Awesome. Uh, yeah, so they are both at like 5.03. So within margin of error between the two of these. Time to tighten. All right. All right, all right. Double check, make sure I got them all. It was my uh, one cable streaming PC setup that I, I featured that in, or something like that, I called it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's tight. Now we can put on our adapter plate here. Uh, what size screws does that use? Probably the same M3 by six, I bet. Let's look at the instructions, quick. M3 by six, fasten the back plate piece on. Onward we go. I need to wear a couple extra M3 by sixes here. Looks like there's two button head and two, no, nope. I'm like short one, I think I might be short one M3 by six screw. Yeah, no, the button heads are from uh, the previous setup, or they're off the original tool head. I think I might be short one screw, unless I put one I shouldn't have. Not like I don't have M3 by sixes, but weird M3 by 6 measure of that thing tricked me be right back all right we'll be here all right Cool. Tighten these down. And now we think we could put the tool head back plate on. Oh, there's a thing I just realized about this design. I don't think you can just, I don't think you can remove the tool head from this machine anymore with this like this. Yeah. You can no longer access the screws to disassemble the, uh, the tool head. Okay, that's all right. Uh, actually, their their graphic kind of shows this pretty well. 
There's two screws up like uh, right, well, right behind the rail. They aren't going to be accessible anymore to remove the tool head from the carriage plate. But you'll be able to remove the carriage plate with two bolts, so it's not a big deal. Bit of a negative, but not a big deal. But it does mean I need to put the tool head on the carriage plate before I put it on here. Here's the brand new, uh, I gotta change that second angle real quick. Okay. Here's the, uh, uh, two bolts versus three. Yes, except what I'm talking about is to remove this off of this carriage plate takes three bolts. So yes, you'll still have to remove those three bolts. It's five now to get the tool head off is what I mean. Cause like I've got to bolt this onto here. Then I bolt this plate onto the rail. So if I need to remove the tool head, I then have to remove the plate, then remove the tool head from the plate. So still, um, still have to remove the three plus two. Still not that big of a deal. Easier than some other machines. So whoop de do, you know? Oh no, we'll survive. Putting on the brand new tool head that Elegoo sent me for reasons I don't understand. Ah, damn it. I just realized another thing here that means, actually. That means that I have to install the cable harness on here, too. Because that gets... Tr okay, let's try this again. <laughs> so this bolts to the backside of the carriage plate... And now I have to install this onto here, then I can install this whole assembly onto the frame. Not a big deal, but something to think about. Let's go over the rail like it's supposed to be. Since these are going to be inaccessible, I'm putting a dab of Loctite on them. They'll be fine. They're into brass. Into brass inserts. They'll be fine. Why is that a little cross-thready, though? Went in fine. I don't like that. Oh, well. This is the brand new tool head. It's the brand new tool head. nice that they made a bolt-on support bracket for the cable yeah i mean it's it's well supported of a tool head i like that because these ribbon cables i always worry it's my biggest problem with ribbon cables is the the long-term serviceability of them all your rails just delivered eddie awesome sounds like you got something to do too cool all right that's on now we can put this on here uh i gotta get the screws for this right here Screws, screws, screws. It's a pair of M3 by fives that go through this carriage plate into the adapter for the rail. Dab a Loctite on those. Through the hole you go. And blindly, I'll put this on here. I got some good videos to reference. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to claim I got... <laughs> I'm not going to take uh, any credit, but <laughs> I hope it's helpful. But, you know, rambling streams being what they are, you never know. All right, I'm curious how much slop is in these holes. Not a lot. Eh, a little bit. I'm just going to hold them up a little bit eyeball this plate to see if it's kind of I can wiggle this ever so slightly on here I 
All right, there's these two screws here, one here and can't see the other one, but it's the same location on the other side that mount this to, to this carriage plate with an M3 by five. And I just got to put a couple of screws in the fan housing to install that. And we have installed the X-axis rail oh, and the belt and retention the belt. But, you know, minor things. Eh, minor things. One. Two. All right. All right, built. And that is a tight fit. I think it's raised the tool head just slightly. Ever so slightly. Maybe we'll gain, gain a millimeter of build volume. Maybe. Don't know. Doubtful. But maybe. I need a pair of pliers to hold this. Oh, somebody asked earlier, I did see somebody asked earlier what tools I used to sell. I sold Matco tools when I sold tools. Matco was the tool brand that I sold. All right, tighten up the belt. Feels pretty good. We can take out these little stoppy stoppers. And now we can run input shaping on the x-axis because we are done our x-axis assembly. How long have we been streaming? I don't even know. Looks cleaner and a lot sturdier. Yeah, it does look cleaner. Uh, hour and a half. Cool. All right. Not sure I'm going to have time to get to the open Neptune. I'm also tempted to do a video on Open Neptune and just do like a quick install video um, on this channel, on the Mandic Labs channel. I think I might do that. I need to get onto a like legit stream schedule and not just shotgunning streams into the world. So both you folks know when to expect streams and also... Um, error to make better use of my time. Uh, I want to, I got a couple of videos I want to film for this channel. I've got a couple projects I've got to get to on Mandic Really. Uh, so yeah. And that's why I ask what, whether I'm going to stream, do open Neptune on the stream or or not. Can't check Twitter every half hour. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm being really bad about just spamming them out there. I need to get on a consistent stream schedule. It's going to help me to be better efficient with my work and you folks to better ex know when to expect a stream. I've got to work on that. It's coming. I started talking to some others about creating like a stream schedule that we can all access and you folks might have at, be able to see too. So, TBD. All right. DRK Lukavi. Yo, what's up everyone? Happy Saturday. Welcome to the stream. Welcome, welcome. All right, uh, I think we can fire this thing up now. Got the new tool head in place. And our linear rails on X and Y axes. Let's fire it up. It 
pull up the web interface. Let's see if it opens. It takes a while to boot up. It takes a minute to boot. We shall see. I accidentally hit the auto uh, <laughs> um, the preset height. All right, home all. We got movement with a linear rail on the x-axis now. All right. Well, the linear rails improve over raw over the rods. This doesn't have rods. This never had rods. The Neptune 4 Max does not have the rod wheel design. It has just regular V-slot roller wheels. So, um, more reliable, less need for maintenance and adjustability. Possibly quicker motion. Possibly. Uh, we're gonna find out when we run an input shaper graph if it made any much uh, much of a difference. Test underscore resonance uh, axes X. Damn it. Am I, is it measure resonance? Do you need an accelerometer for an input shaper graph? Yes, you do. Am I entering the wrong command? Yes, you need an accelerometer to read out resonance uh, frequency and to get a graph. You can do like manual stuff, but it's not exactly the same. Test resonances, it's plural, it's plural. That's the problem. Here it goes. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. <clears throat> Seventy five hertz, eighty hertz. All right. Oh, wow. It really doesn't test that high of a frequency on X. Okay. Is the tool head only supported on top? Yes. The tool head is only supported by these top two carriage bolts now. So, like, I can wiggle it, but I'm having to try. So, arguably, there's now less support on the tool head. I wonder if you couldn't have remained, haven't, couldn't have kept one of the carriage, the uh, V-slot roller wheels to help support it. Kind of defeats some of the purpose, I guess. But, uh, yeah. Okay. Now I got to get into Putty and Win SAP to pull up our new graph. One nine two one six eight. All right, making our new graph so we can pull it up.
and let's see what the new graph looks like. Uh, it's not done making it yet. This processor is slow at making graphs. I need to learn about input shaping. I just turned, tuned my P1S and started printing all the things. I mean, you can't tune input shaping on a, a P1S or a P1B or a, a X1. You're kind of stuck to whatever value they choose, unfortunately. Which is largely fine, but... I tuned input shaping on Marlin, but it's all manual since no accelerometers. Yes, and you can do that with... Uh, you can do that with Clipper as well, but, um, where's my graph? Refresh. Ah, there it is. You can do that with Clipper as well, but, um, generally recommended to use an accelerometer. Make your life easier at the least. All right, got my graph saved. Let's pull it up and take a look. It has an integrated SOC. The um, the the board in here is like a MakerBase based board, kind of a skipper clone. Uh, it's got an ARM processor on it, so you can change linear flow in Bamboo Studio. Yes, so you can change flow and you can change pressure advance in Bamboo Studio, but that's nothing to do with uh, input shaper. Okay, uh, let me open it up, take a look at it. after okay let me pull up screen share so you folks can take a look all right screen sharing this is our before graph for this uh, here this is a before graph of running the V slot roller wheels on the X axis on this thing so it was recommending um, EI as the input shaper model and 9700 acceleration max. Uh, and okay, what is after? Or, well, I want to look at what our magnitude was. Eh, two. And our after is recommending MZV. So we reduced our overall frequency and it looks like it moved down the um, down the frequency a little bit. And now it's only recommending 8400 acceleration, but a cleaner graph, yes. Definitely a way cleaner graph. So looking at that, we got a lot of noise in the lower frequency, uh, down from 25 to 75. We got a lot of noise on this one. And then the linear rail one, vastly improved with a really solid defined peak. This is a way better graph. Um, recommending less acceleration for our maximum acceleration oh wait no no i'm sorry it's recommending 9300 still less still less but i like this graph a hell of a lot better uh so hey that seems like an okay improvement a bit like the um a bit like the y rails they improved did they improve a lot no but they did improve. Uh, I want to pull up the pricing on the Y axis or the X axis kit. X axis kit. Let's screen share this. X axis kit actually for the uh, Neptune Four. Um, so you don't have to drill the holes that I drilled; they're already in there properly. So the X axis kit with the MGN Nine uh, H rail is ba, 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 with the cheap rail that I have $45. I think the lack of improvement is the way they are both mounted. I don't disagree. I think the mounting leaves a little bit of rigidity and strength on the table. I'd certainly prefer to see an X axis that replaced the, the extrusion maybe with a, a thicker piece of metal tested on the floor. Okay. Yeah, sure. Let's do that. Um, I'll clear a spot on the floor and we can do that. Yeah. Just gotta look at what I gotta move. We'll retest, sure. Workbench cam, all right. Uh, 
Orca, sli Orca Slicer always glitches out when slicing layers. I never have that problem. Orca Slicer just released version 2.0 today. Brand new uh, Orca Slicer 2.0 released today. All right. I got a clear spot on the floor. It is carpet on concrete, but it's an area rug directly on concrete. No pad underneath of it. Um, so, yeah. Yes, uh, Orca Slicer 2.0.0 launched today. It has scarf joints, uh, 3D honeycomb infill, as Ditto was saying there. Yeah. This thing is heavy. Okay. It's on the concrete on, it's on carpet on concrete. A lot more solid than my bench is. I don't know if the uh, OBSBOT camera can pick it up. Oh, I can use the, uh, the Osmo. Osmo camera. Can pick it up. Okay, there it is anyway. Um, the, I'm gonna switch the Ozbot camera angle real quick, which is probably going to be a black screen for a second while I reset the camera. Yeah, or the, uh, uh, the Osmo action, I mean. It's gonna, oh, okay, at least it's gonna look like a picture of Gene for a second. There we go. Okay, so you can see the setup and the disaster of it is the floor in my studio. Um, but it is on top of an area of two area rugs on the floor, which is concrete. So way more solid than the bench. All right, I'm gonna send commands to test resonance now. Do it again. Why are you? Test resonance is X, there we go. More Gene. She's snoozing. Jean's snoozing. Yeah, it's worth checking out. Definitely worth seeing how big of a difference it makes. Oh, I just drilled through one of those holes a little too much. How's the cookie, good, cookie cat voron going? Fine. Uh, it's probably the next stream. We'll probably work on that again. Moving with so many animals, animals will be an event. Yes, it will. Um, I had to wait on Nathan. Uh, Cookie CAD sent me an, uh, another spool of each filament for this. So I can print a few mods and add-ons for it and uh, keep the project going. Just to like fully get it where I want it to be. Are the skirts done? Skirts are done. The skirts aren't as impressive, unfortunately. Um, because... Since they're like low layer height, um, they don't have any of the gradient in them. So there's none of the gradient in the skirts because of the the lack of low layer height. Like, you know, it's just changing on one layer. I can mix and match a little bit. I printed a handful in the blue, a handful in the... Uh... Is anybody else cranking their volume to here? Uh, stream volume should not have changed. Um, and the microphone's maybe a hair farther from my, my mouth at the moment, but yeah. <laughs> Looked away for a second and thought it shrunk. You need an AMS for that? No, this is just layer height changes. This is just pause, M600, change it height, change it height. So, so yeah. Um, I did order, I ordered a wave share screen. Fuzzy Tomato, thanks for stopping by. See you next time. Um, I'm expecting the next stream is probably going to be Tuesday. I think Tuesday is going to be the next stream. Um, oh shit. Actually, it'll be Monday. Ruby's, Ruby is babysitting on Monday. It's going to be Monday. Mine just turned very, very, uh, turned low. Okay. Um, uh, volume that is, uh, okay. Did it finish X? I don't hear it vibrating. Cool. X is finished. Now I'll do Y. Uh, I ordered a wave share screen for this thing. Um, 
and I'm going to print the WaveShare screen mod from Heart K for it. I needed more filament for that. Uh, I also designed, I showed on stream a couple days ago. I designed these little braces, uh, little frame braces for the front front of the frame for a V0. I have these for Ender 5, but I, I tweaked them to fit this. Except the problem is right now it hits the hits the Kirigami bed front. So I gotta I've gotta tweak the design a little bit. Gotta iterate. What is that green? I want some. This is pop green from um it's pop green ASA from uh Polymaker. Pop green. Why did I just go black? Oh. I don't know. Camera died. I don't know why. Coming back. Should be back. Should be back. Should be back. There we go. When I when I took the desk up and down, the power plug, because the camera's running on a battery AC wall plug, it pulled the pulled the cord. The table pulled the cord. You are correct. Okay. I should have a locking, like, cord for that or something. All right. Uh, we've now rerun Input Shaper on both X and um, Y axes. I'm going to go in. Oh, I got I to gotta send the command and do graphs again. Uh, is pop green above the machine, the V2? No, that is, um, that green you're seeing there is lime green ABS. I don't like the color of it. It's a little more like toxic slime green. It's, it's a light. Let me grab the spool of pop green. I'll show you. This is pop green, uh, pop green ASA. My polymaker ASA, my inland ASA is three weeks old. Now it's navy blue, not black. That is strange. Um, that is strange. I haven't run into that. I've run a lot of black ASA from polymaker. I always wonder, pure speculation, but I always wonder if inland doesn't get like secondary run stuff, you know, like B tier, the stuff that Polymaker doesn't necessarily want to sell um, under their own name. Pure speculation. Pure speculation. No idea. But I wonder that. Uh. This is lime green. So that's lime green. Uh, and honestly, the camera's a little bright right now. 105 watching, hit the like button. I think that's probably a little better. It's very yellow. Yeah, it's got a lot of yellow to it. I kind of like this. I do like the lime green for some things. If I was making like a, a Toxic Avenger themed uh, machine or something where I wanted like a dirtier look to it, I kind of like I, I kind of like the lime green for that. For the machine that I'm building for my um, my green my original green 0.1, I wanted this green. This is the color I wanted, uh, and pop green is beautiful for that. Pop green is beautiful for that. Uh, let me drop. Drop a link in the chat. Yeah, there we go. I'll drop my Polymaker affiliate link in the chat. Polymaker is the official filament sponsor of the Mandic Really and Mandic Labs channels. Thank you very much to Polymaker. They came on as a, uh, a, a material partner, not really a sponsor. They just provide materials for projects, but 
Hazard Hazardous Venom uh, Venomous Voron. Yeah, that'd be a great color for like that kind of vibe. Okay, Cyberpunk build. That could be a good one. Yeah, I've wanted to do... I want to start doing like... I feel like people don't do... I know like hobbyists do do this, but like I kind of want to do like some showpiece like themed builds. To, like a Cyberpunk themed. You see th it's, like themed PC builds all the time, but like not themed... 3D printer builds. Um, I don't know. There's a few things that we in the 3D printing space don't do that people in the PC world do that like could be interesting. Like I know Adam uh, Vector 3D was talking about it. Uh, do I have an Amazon affiliate link? I, I can pull one up real quick. Honestly, if you buy, well, if you buy from Polymaker, they ship via Amazon. So, um, there's that. And ASA. Damn it, went to their page. Pop green, there we go. Come on. Load. Dropped it in the link. Dropped it in the chat. Uh, but yeah, Adam was talking about... Um, Adam Vector 3D was talking about the idea of like... You see like Linus. Linus Tech Tips or Jay's Two Cents or all these. They'll build computers and then just disassemble them. And then use the components to build another computer in a new case or like whatever. Um, he was talking about like maybe some of us should consider doing that in 3D printing. Like... You build a Voron, but like the motors and the hot end and the main board and all that could be used in a rat rig. Um, or like things like that, where you could you could disassemble multiple... You could build a machine, take the parts, and then build another machine with it. It's not a terrible idea. There's, but the problem is there's just some stuff that doesn't cross over. Like a frame doesn't cross over, or like panels don't cross over. Then you're left with a Voron frame you got no use for. Eh. Uh, a stealth build. I was kind of thinking about doing a stealth build too. Like a just like blacked out. A label and an intake. I mean you got the stealth skirt design for the V-Zeros. Okay, where's my... Uh, when SCP didn't log in. Okay, let's go get our damn graphs. There we go. Log in. That could be cool to do some decals, do like uh, black decals on black prints or something. So like it's kind of that uh, that matte black on shiny black look or something. Ah, shit. I want to download those to a specific folder. Where the rest of them are. Neptune 4 Max. When SCP doesn't save the directory where you download things to and it's really annoying. Okay, okay, close. All right, I gotta rename these real quick and then we will be able to pull these up. Okay. All right, let's take a look at our graphs again. Now we can look at our graphs after we're doing it on um, on concrete. Let's see what it looks like. Uh, screen share. All right. Uh, okay, here's our after on the uh, x-axis. Yeah, okay. After on the x-axis was MZV... And 9,300. I think I got the wrong graph here. Yeah, actually, our, 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 X, our X got worse. Worse. Our X got worse. There's the, the noise is back down low. That's so strange. That can't be right. Kind of looks like it. Weird. 
John Olson became a member. I didn't see that happen. Thank you very much for joining as a member, John Olson. Reminded me I need to buy some more ASA. Thanks for the Amazon link. Thank you for the support. Um, yeah, somehow our our graph got worse. I want, uh, well, no, that doesn't make sense. I was going to say, sometimes it saves multiple readings and they joined earlier today when it went on, uh, when I posted on Twitter. Well, thank you for the support. Appreciate it. That's why I didn't see a notification then, but thank you. Um, yeah, so our graph got worse. Oh, I didn't look at the y-axis. Let me look at it. No, I'll, I'll share it if it makes any sense. Where the hell? I'm getting mixed up, I think. This keeps opening, like, the wrong shit, I think. Yeah, no. Oh, yeah, no, it's opening the wrong shit. Okay, let me try this again. What is happening here? It keeps opening the wrong graphs. All right, I need to open all of these in a different way. Carpet allowed more movement. Possible, possibly the carpet. I'm gonna try and open this in a browser because these graphs are being, the uh, inbuilt photo thing in Windows is being really dumb right now. I don't know why, but it, like when I try to open one, it opens a different one for some reason. So I'm getting very confused. Okay, this is... <laughs> dumb, dumb, dumb. Let me see if I can't open these in Chrome. A little odd, but I should be able to, I think. Yes, okay, here we go. This is annoying, but I can do it. Where did my y-axis go? Actually, yeah, I'm missing a y-axis from the concrete. This is so confusing. I'm going to go back into WinSCP and download again because I don't know what's happening here, but I don't seem to have the y-axis graph from running on the concrete. Y-axis. Download. Browse. Put it where I want it to be and name it properly. Okay, now it's there. Rename it. After. C. Okay, now let's check this out. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is a lot of work. Happy manufacturing, welcome! All right, I'm gonna screen, uh, share this screen with you real quick. Now I should be good. This was our after, um, this was our after of the linear rails on the Y axis. After of linear rails and the Y axis, this is on concrete. Our, well, that improved a fair bit actually. It cleaned up a lot down low. Uh, cleaned up a lot down low and it's recommending significantly higher acceleration at 2300. It was 1800 before. Did it go in order of magnitude better? No. The resonance is higher. Um, the resonance is higher. It's actually a higher density, so a higher resonance reading, but it's cleaner. It's less peaky, so it's a cleaner graph. Strange, but it's there. So it's recommending higher acceleration on the more stable base. That's interesting. Okay, now let me get the x-axis in here so we can compare those. Hopefully. Yeah. 
Yeah, these are the exact same graph. Something's wrong there too. I gotta download that one again. Nothing's easy. Rob wobbly table was having negative effect. You were right. Wobbly table was having a negative effect. You are correct. It needs a more stable base. Can you use thermal CPU thermal paste for 3D printers? I do not recommend it. There is dedicated thermal paste uh, that is recommended for it. One second. Um, boron nitride paste from Slice Engineering is what I use. Did I change camera angles? Yeah, boron nitride paste from Slice Engineering. That's what I use. Um, hot ends get too hot. That's the problem. The only 3DP paste that I'm aware of. Some 3D printing companies send other pastes with um, like hot ends and stuff, but I'm not sure about them. I don't know. This stuff is meant to ha handle higher temperatures than CPU thermal paste is. So it's not the most thermally conductive thing, like, you know, your cryonaut or your KPX or something is gonna work better on a CPU. I think actually Jay's Two Cents just did a test about that. He tried using this stuff on a CPU and found it wasn't that good, but this handles the temperatures for hot ends better, which is what it's intended for, so. Uh, download. Let me take a look at this quick. Did this graph actually update? I think something got screwed up in my graph. My x-axis graphs look identical. So let me pull it up quick and we'll, we'll, we'll compare. Yeah, they are. I'm like shocked how identical they are. That's very, very strange. Very, very, very strange. What can happen sometimes, and I'm wondering if this is what happened. Let me share the screen with you real quick so you can see. Screen share. Our, our input shaper graph, uh, no change values whatsoever. I'm switching between two graphs right now, and there's no difference whatsoever. Um, so... What can happen, and when I wonder if it happened, I'm going to jump into WinSCP and check. What can happen is sometimes... Ah. Sometimes it saves the values, uh, the previous CSV file. That's exactly what happened. There's two CSV files in here. The one and the one and the previous one. Let me delete the previous one. So it's taking data from two of them. It'll take... However many resonance CSV files you have, it'll take them and it'll combine them and average them. Um, so it it made it uh, it made a graph based off the data of the two. That's why they look identical. Or it made it off of the one and it just went with the previous one. But I've had it combine them into a into a like a uh, I've had it combine multiple into one graph before. And it'll actually show you at the top. It'll tell you if there are multiple graphs being referenced. Um, so yeah, the graph, the data, uh, fresh prints, wouldn't the name of the CSV change? It should. So it used the data off the previous one. I'm redoing it right now. Having it remake the graph. I deleted the old one. And only had the data from the newer graph now. Should have the data from the newer graph now. This is definitely different data now. All right, updated, refresh. Refresh. I don't think it updated in WinSCP. This is being weird. This is the, the this is the problem with science and making videos. Everything you think you're like, "Oh yeah, I'll just make a quick video about resonance." input shaper graphs and it's never quick it's also the problem with streaming this kind of stuff all right 
download this to his folder. Let me double check, see if it's actually updated. I don't think it overwrote the, the existing one. Overwrite it. Yeah, it didn't overwrite the original one. I have to delete it all again. Ugh, I've got to go in there. I've got to delete the existing ones. And now remake a graph. Let's try this again. Again. Sent the command. Now it should be remaking the graph. Okay. What are you folks going to do with the rest of your Saturday? Uh, what screws, bolts, and hardware boxes do you like? Uh, do you use? What I use currently is these Servalite ones. Um, Servalite, I got these for free. My dad gave me these. He got them from like an auction or some shit forever ago. Uh, they have inbuilt specific size trays. As such, they're not ideal for everything. Um, there are, I have different ones with different size trays in them. Uh, but what I got is ones from Harbor Freight. Uh, I just couldn't justify the expense of the expensive ones. I would have liked to have, but I just couldn't. Um, not the only one fighting a computer makes you feel good. Yeah. Every day, all day. It's my life. Sleep since it's 1030. Lander, thank you for stopping by. I don't think we're going to be here too much longer, so you're not going to miss a lot. But you can always catch it in the VOD. Thanks for stopping by and for being here. Appreciate it. Um, Harbor Freight uh, organizers. They're honestly not the nicest damn things in the world, that's for sure. But they're not ridiculously overpriced. Or expensive. Um, not necessarily overpriced. That's not fair. Uh, Uline? No, Harbor Freight. Why are, you, why are we in Harbor Uline? Google, see you next stream. Thanks for your, we will see you then. Uh, Monday, I believe. Monday will be the next stream. I will announce on Twitter ASAP when that will be. Uh, I want to pull these up so I can show you which ones I have. I could have walked over to the other side of the studio and grabbed them by now. Yeah, I'm not even finding them on their website. Screw it. I'm going to go walk over and grab some. Are you done making graphs? Looks like it's done making graphs now. Refresh. It's refusing to make the x-axis graph. I don't understand why. I'm going to rerun x-axis. I'm deleting the CSV file. And I'm going to rerun input shaper on the x-axis. It's the best thing I can do to, to force it. I don't know why, but it's refusing to make the graph for the x-axis. Okay, it is re-going once again. I'm going to go grab that bin real quick. It'll happen in the new studio next time. Uh, but these are, I'm going to make like a storage shelving unit that I can put these into and, and pull them out of. But uh, I got these Harbor Freight. They're like $10, $15 a piece. The most annoying thing about them, which I can pretty easily fix, I think, uh, is that's as far as the lid opens. They don't flip all the way around, which it leans like ever so slightly forward. So it wants to do that. Pretty annoying. But you can at least take the trays out, and I can always reprint different size trays if I need to for this. Um, was thinking of making a Gridfinity rugged box for hardware, but waiting on bigger printer from Bamboo, and was wondering what you use. Yeah, these. These are what I have. I'm going to put all my hardware in these. I just haven't gotten to it, because I want to make a, a home for them to go into first. And now it's going to wait for the new studio. So Now it'll wait for the new studio. Hello! Welcome! Proletarius Digitis. Did I got that kind of right? Sorry if I butchered it. I probably did. All right. We have cre created a new CSV file. Now you've got no choice but to make a graph off the new CSV file. 
Nope. I'm go Oh! I think I know what's happening. Maybe I know what's happening? Some odd reason Putty might not be updating the directory? That doesn't make a lot of sense, but... Potential. 192, 168, 1... Try this again. Ay ay ay. Saw the record of yesterday's uh, the VOD yesterday, but you're home from uh, you're home today. Awesome. Yeah, it is refusing to make a graph. It keeps giving me errors, like there's no CSV file. Um, a screen share real quick so you can see what I'm talking about. It's telling me that there is no graph. Or there's no CSV file, but uh, here's WinSCP. There's the CSV file. Make a new directory. Yeah. Or what I could do is I can take the name of this and I can force it to use that because it's it's just using the default. Um, oh shit! I went too far. Let me paste this in here. Did I just eliminate the directory? I think I did. Eh. Yeah, I think I just deleted way too much. I'm going to send that anyway just to see what happens, but I don't think it's going to work. Double check paths, because it, yeah. Alright. I'm going to fresh copy from Clipper, put it into a notepad quick, and then redo it and actually put the file name in it. Let me go into notepad++ real quick. Because so I think something's getting lost in translation here. Notepad++. Something's getting lost in translation. I'm going to replace the directory name. Yeah, okay, here we go. Now I can copy the CSV file name. Rename, copy. Cool. Now I'm going to delete this. I've got a new command string with, damn it, with the actual name of the file I'm working with. Uh, doubt the uh, Andrew Rogers. Sounds like you're a little behind. We're talking about the wiggle of the um, the toolhead. Reasonable point there that it shouldn't. Okay, I think I got it this time. I had to manually type in the. I manually, I went in here and uh, manually typed in our value, so our, our uh, CSV name, and I think it's working now. Yep, it's working now. Okay. Oh, hop spot angle. Okay. Uh, yes, I agree. Uh, in real world printing with the tool head moving, I don't think it's going to wiggle or anything with the uh, no support underneath of it. So, honestly, I bet rebooting the machine probably would have fixed whatever the hell was just happening there um, with that, but whatever. Okay. Almost done making a graph. Uh, our parts for the Nevermore are done. Never more parts for the uh, cookie cad printer. Oh yeah, there's the shine of the dark magic. Whew, that is hot. A little stringy. I might need to dry this stuff. It's fresh out of the bag, but it's a little stringy. But. So hard to get this stuff on camera. The she I wonder if the ops bot shows it any better. 
Nope, not in the least. Oh, 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 there we go. You can get a little of the purple vibe out of it in that angle. This angle, you get the, the bluish, greenish, and then the, the purplish from that tone. See, I've got a lot of ghosting going on. All of a sudden, I think I need to retune input shaping on my 2.4. I've been getting a lot of ghosting the last couple days. I don't know where that came from. A bit like gasoline on water. Yeah, kind of that vibe. That oil slick vibe. You're right. Okay, uh, let me refresh here. I should have... Okay, let's try this again. Project file. Put this in the folder where I want it. Okay. Yes, replace the existing one. Now let me take a look and see if this is doing what I want it to do. Okay, I've got my before graph. Hey, that's a different graph. We finally got a different graph. Jeez, that was difficult. Okay, let me uh, switch up angles here real quick and we'll show you. It's not a big difference, but it's a difference which is what's important. And I didn't expect a big difference. Okay. Um, let me move this a little bit. There we go. Okay. So this is before, not on concrete. This is on the bench. This is the x-axis on the bench. This is the x-axis on the concrete floor. So honestly, very similar. Um, actually it's recommending lower acceleration. Oh wait, it, it, no, actually it moved to EI. No, they're both on EI. They're both recommending EI, but it's recommending slightly lower acceleration and maybe ever so slightly noisier down low. So maybe the resonance isn't getting absorbed as well on the concrete, or maybe it's getting absorbed too well by the carpet. Who knows? But very similar. This is the, the like minimal difference I really expected uh, from putting it down on the floor. Shockingly, the uh, y-axis was significantly different. Gotta go check my print. I'm working on auxiliary cooler for the A1 since cooling is lackluster. Alright, curious to see what you come up with for that. I, I really haven't used the A1 much because the recall. I'm, wait, I'm waiting on the update parts. I'm just not even going to bother using it till the update comes out and then I'll make a video on here doing the update or we'll do a stream about it. Not sure. But I think that's what we're going to call it for this one, folks. So putting on concrete improved our Y axis, which is definitely more understandable because the whole bench shaking back and forth when the uh, uh, bed slings. So good solid uh, water is wet. Uh, a good solid bench for your uh, 3D printer when it's slinging a lot of weight makes sense, doesn't it? Uh, and our x-axis rail installation on the Neptune 4 Max went smoothly. So, yay! I think that's what we're going to call it for this one, folks. Oh, Andrew Rogers, thank you very much for becoming a lab assistant. Thank you for becoming a member. Very appreciated, Andrew Rogers. But maximum bombastic, uh, sorry, yeah. We've been going for about two hours now, I think. Oh, two and a half hours, jeez. Uh, yeah, so gonna call it. I want to do a video. Uh, did changing the rails change the input shaper graphs much? Uh, I'll post the after stuff on, um, on Twitter. I'll post the after graphs on Twitter, uh, so you can compare it. It improved the X axis more than I expected it to. It, ex it improved the Y axis a bit, not a lot, but it did improve both of them. Uh, more on the x-axis than the y-axis, which really surprises me, honestly. Uh, but it did. So, uh, yeah. Gonna call it here. We're gonna stream again on Monday. We'll be back to work on the, uh, CookieCAD V0 on Monday. We'll be back to work on the CookieCAD V0 on Monday. And, yeah. That's where I'm gonna call it for today. I need to rest. I haven't taken a day off in quite a while. Uh, so I think I'm gonna take a rest day tomorrow. If I take a rest day, I mean, I'll probably just not make any content and um, work on some design stuff and just chill out and watch a movie while I do or something like that. So I say that. I'm probably almost certainly going to film a video tomorrow. I am also going to go film a video right now. I'm going to take this Neptune 4 Max and I'm going to install Open Neptune.
the uh, main branch of Clipper. Happy Easter. Oh, yes. Happy Easter to those who celebrate. Yeah, that. I forgot. <laughs> um, Ruby's working tomorrow. I forgot. So, um, I'm going to install the mainline branch of Clipper on the Neptune 4 Max and make a video about it for here on the Mandic Really channel. Or Mandic Really. Mandic Labs channel. Sorry. Um, that's probably what I'm going to do right after the stream. I'm going to go probably eat something, clean up, and make that video. So, Thank you folks for being here. Thank you so much to everybody who joined up as a member. Right now I can see Robot Overlord, Josh Show, uh, uh, John Olson, Andrew Rogers. Thank you for becoming members. The support is so greatly appreciated. It really makes this uh, more justifiable as we move forward to keep streaming and making content on this channel as well as Mandic really. So thank you folks. Especially with the move coming up, some things are gonna have to change. So I appreciate the support. Donald coming in with a super chat. Thank you uh, very much. That's also an excellent way to help out. I appreciate the super chats as well. Thank you so much, Donald. Um, oh, you sent a couple of them there. Thank you so very much. Apparently I missed some previously. I'm missing, I'm sorry, I'm missing various things. Oh, I missed another one. Let's go back. Uh, Loop 101 also sent a super chat earlier in... Um, in the uh, stream. Loop101 sent a super chat as well. Thank you, Donald, for the one. Max Maximum Bombastic, thank you for becoming a member. Thank you so very much for becoming a member and for supporting, I appreciate it. Maximum Bombastic at the end coming in there with the support, I appreciate it. I will get uh, a time set for our Monday stream ASAP. I'm thinking earlier in the day, probably noon or 1 p.m. Eastern time. I'll make an announcement ASAP. So yet today, I'll make an announcement when we're streaming on Monday. So I'll catch you all later. Thank you very much for stopping by. Uh, let's get the Gene Cam quick. Let me move this quick. Gene Cam for our outro. She, as she snoozes. Gene Cam for the outro. See ya, folks. All the contributions are for the Clipper Cat House. All right. Awesome. Awesome. It's happening. So looking forward to it. Boop.